Today on Pardiff, we have the brand new KTM 250 Adventure. Today we'll find out what the 250 Duke's engine feels like in the 390 Adventure's frame. How good does that feel? If you stay till the end, we also have a giveaway from Big Bad Bikes where you answer one simple question and you could stand to win some very cool motorcycle goodies. And as usual, please do share, like and subscribe to Pardiff. Hello and welcome to Pardiff. We have known that the 250 Adventure would follow the 390 into the market in India and outside. Well, for us, that day is now here. Here are the five essential things you need to know about the newest KTM on the market. But before we get into that, subscribe to Pardrift on YouTube and smash the bell notification icon so that India's best automotive content can find you every single time. And the first thing is that the 250 Adventure should be thought of as a scaled-down 390 Adventure but that does not actually refer to the physical size of the motorcycle because it's all the same bodywork shared absolutely as it was on the 390. So what you will get if you buy one of these is a substantial large motorcycle with a lot of space for the rider, enough space for a pillion or luggage. Point number two would be the Dynamics package and if you look at it, the suspension, the brakes, the chassis is all exactly the same, including the weight as the 390 Adventure. There are a few changes though. One, the front brake pad is a non-sintered material which is exactly how uh, KTM organizes the Dukes also and these are now MRFs, not Metzlers. And it does make actually quite a difference because what we were expecting the 250 Adventure to do is do what the 390 Adventure does which is have a very stiff ride quality and it does but when you go onto bad roads and pick up the pace the motorcycle actually irons them out really well. Unfortunately the 250 doesn't do quite that good a job and I think it comes down to the fact that the Metzlers are slightly softer on the sidewall than these MRFs and that creates a motorcycle for the 250 that sort of bounces around everywhere. So the ride quality I definitely think they could have improved. On the other hand, these MRFs have a much sharper contour compared to the Metzlers. So the 250 actually darts into corners and it's rather enjoyable. What doesn't work so well is the change of brake pads because these brake pads don't give it so much bite and therefore you do feel like the brakes are a little bit lacking. It does stop but there's not that much feel so you're going to have to learn to trust the motorcycle a little bit. Point number three would be performance. Now the change from a 45 bhp engine to a 30 bhp engine keeping the same weight means that this motorcycle has roughly 65% of the power it used to have. That's a big difference. So right off the bottom there isn't a lot of grunt and when you're going off-roading you will stall the motorcycle a few times before you get used to raising the revs really high. But at three and a half thousand, the power actually comes along and between three and a half and six, this is a really nice motor. It's very sweet, very refined, very calm and it pulls along very smoothly indeed. From 6,000 RPM, there's no lack of power, but the pegs will start to vibrate just a little bit and that's about 100 kilometers an hour in sixth. So your highway cruise is looking to me like 80 to 100 kilometers an hour. So overall, is this a real hot performer as we expect KTMs to be? Not really, when the Zigwheels guys tested it, they told us that the 250 Adventure, it has approximately the same acceleration as a Royal Enfield Himalayan. So that brings us to question number four. Does the 250 Adventure go off-roading? Well, I would say this is 90% tourer. 10% off-roader at best and all of that ability more or less is coming from the fact that it has a 19-inch front wheel. KTM has made a compromise where the seat height is high but it's not super high like a dirt bike. The ground clearance it's a little bit more than the Duke and the suspension travel is also a little bit more than a Duke. Unfortunately, it doesn't come together as nicely as it should just like on the 390 Adventure so if you go off-roading with this motorcycle you will struggle a little bit. So net-net, does the motorcycle go off-road? Yes really really off-road no point number five is pricing which applies to everybody and features which applies mostly to varun painter 
And what I mean by that is that that motorcycle is about two and a half lakh rupees ex showroom, which makes it roughly 55, 60 thousand rupees less than the 390 Adventure. How have KTM made it so much cheaper? Well, it's got a steel handlebar instead of an aluminium one, and you've got no electronics at all. So there's no Bluetooth, there's no traction control, and there's no quick shifter either. In terms of feels though, we do have a little bit more of a challenge. The tyres do make the ride quality a little bit worse. The change of the brake pads do make the brake feel worse. And overall, this is going to make a nice tourer, but you are going to have to spend a little bit of money making two or three small upgrades along the way. So overall, the niceness of the Duke 250, you can certainly feel it on this motorcycle between 4 and 6,000 RPM. But outside of that, this is just one of the nicest affordable tourers. So how does it fit into that segment? Well, that's a story for a video that's coming to part if, like I said, subscribe, hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss out because that motorcycle will be back on Pardift very, very shortly. Thank you so much for watching and now for the Big Bad Bikes giveaway. If you watch this video, you could stand to win one of five SM Fender Supermoto Fenders from Polysport which make premium plastics for motorcycles, especially off-roading motorcycles. All you have to do is first subscribe to us on Pardrift, second subscribe to us on Instagram, we are at Pardrift and third leave us a comment with the right answer to this question. We said that the 250 Adventure is a combination of two other KTMs. What KTMs are those? It's simple right?